Hi there, welcome to today's video, which is a little different to usual, as you've no doubt guessed. Basically, it's way too hot to do any sculpture work this week. Um, I've tried, believe me, but I've just had to give up. It's absolutely boiling. So I thought with the fairly recent end of an academic year and the start of a new one next month, that it would be quite a nice idea to share my tips on how to get your work discovered as an illustrator. We all know it's really tough to get your work seen by the right people. So I'm gonna share my tips and tricks as a freelance illustrator. Um, and I hope you find this video useful. If you're new to my channel, my name's Lizzie, more commonly known as Clay Disarray for my creative work, and I'm a polymer clay artist and illustrator, and I'll just show you some of my work here, just so you can get a gauge for what I do. And here's some footage of my studio. I'm not actually in my studio at the moment, as firstly, it's way too hot, and secondly, I get a lot of traffic noise because my studio overlooks quite a busy road so I've come into the, the quiet spare room today just to, to have a chat to camera really. So let's get started on my eight tips to get you promoting your work as an illustrator. So tip number one is have a great online portfolio. I use Cargo Collective for my Clay Disarray online portfolio and I've been with them for I think around six years and I really really like their templates. I really like how you're able to take charge of your own admin behind the scenes and they make it really easy to create different projects and add images and text so I'd really recommend them to be honest. I've, I've found no issues really with them over the years. My website costs me I think around $66 a year through cargo which I think is more than reasonable and I think it's fairly competitive when um, compared to to other platforms out there too. I really like how my website is basically really white um, because it allows my work to, to really stand out so it does the job really well I think it just quietly stands there as a, a website on its own not demanding any attention of itself it's just there really to promote my work and um, to make it look as good as possible really. I know a lot of my contemporaries use Squarespace to host their websites and again it's a really great platform so by all means go and take a look at, uh, at Squarespace. I find it really helpful to have my own designated domain name as well um, I know it's an added expense but I find it really useful and I bought mine through I think it's called Act Now Domains and it's around £14 a year. I just think that a personalised domain name looks a lot more professional than um, you know variations of, uh, of your name combined with a, another website and I find that the more professional your website is the more professional that you'll come across as an artist. Tip number two, projects. While it's great to be working on client briefs, and you know, that's what we all want to do, it's how we earn our money, um, it's also really important to be working on your own personal project work, um, really to ensure that you're staying creative, you're working on a project that you're really passionate about, and to really showcase the work that you want to do as an illustrator, um, and often that comes through with, with personal work. And it also demonstrates that you're able to think in a number of ways, when trying to um, create images for one particular project. So um, very often with client work, you, you might produce just the one image, but with personal work or, or personal projects, you can go off and create 20, 30 images and they all relate to the one particular theme or subject matter. So it really evidences that you can think in a number of ways um, about one particular subject matter so it, it's it's really important I think and also with project work um, this is very often the way that you'll get known um, as an illustrator because they're the pieces that you'll be able to kind of push forward and promote for instance I have a number of passion projects that I work on um, whenever I've got any spare time really the first is for movie posters um, that have been reimagined with polymer clay and mixed media and I'll just show you a few here and through this project, I was able to promote my own work through contacting various web platforms who might like to feature my work. So I found it really invaluable, to be honest, 
because it's really helped push my work and to get my work seen by the right people. And this brings us nicely onto tip number three, which is web magazines and art blogs. So through my movie poster projects, I was able to contact various web platforms, as I mentioned, and they included BuzzFeed, Board Panda, and Design Taxi, I think, um, along with a few others. And I found this really invaluable because if they like your work and they like what you're doing, um, they'll often create an article about your work. And these web platforms can be seen by thousands upon thousands of people. So um, they often have a direct link to your online portfolio. So you'll be getting a lot of web traffic coming through. They're also really handy in terms of social media because if your Instagram or your Twitter account is published, alongside the article, you'll invariably get a, a few followers as a result of your, your work being published. You can't guarantee sometimes that your work will be seen by the right people in among these thousands of, of viewers, but they really help to kind of elevate your work in terms of getting it seen. Um, so you can almost evidence that your work is liked by, you know, quite a lot of people when you perhaps approach art directors, etc. So they're really worth doing. I've also worked on some polymer paintings as a uh, personal project. And essentially I rework or reimagine old well-known paintings such as Mona Lisa and uh, the Zafrida self-portrait here, girl with a pearl earring and there's the, the laughing cavalier here. So I did the rounds again with this particular project and I think it was picked up by a few and um, I'm just trying to remember actually. But through this my work was then featured on My Modern Mets which is a fantastic art blog and really well respected and although I hadn't contacted them directly or I don't think I had but through posting my work on various other web platforms they were then able to, to pick up my work and feature it on, on their site. Just because you're, you're getting featured on Buzzfeed etc which um, is you know fodder for the masses essentially. The potential of who's going to pick that up afterwards is uh, is there for the taking really. So um, yeah, I'd really recommend that you look at, at web magazines, art blogs, etc. And um, you know, if it's not right for now, they may well feature your project in, in the future. So it's always worth chipping away at your own personal projects and yeah, just keep contacting art blogs every so often. Maybe, I don't know, once, twice a year um, so you're not annoying them because that's the last thing that you want to do. But yeah, just promote your work as, uh, as best you can. And tip number four is social media. And this is pretty obvious really. Um, I found social media to be really helpful in terms of um, promoting my work. Controversially, I favour Twitter for getting my work seen out there. Um, as much as I like Instagram, um, I've had a bit of a nightmare with it over the years because I recently had to start a new account because my previous account was just basically broken. My comment notifications wouldn't work so I just wasn't able to have any proper conversations with anybody so I was just worried that it would look rude, you know, that people were sending me lovely messages and um, although I was responding, um, they wouldn't get any notifications to let them know that I'd commented back so I was just getting really fed up with that so yeah it wasn't an easy decision so yeah I've just created a new one and just hopefully um, I'll be able to get some new followers as time goes on. It's uh, yeah been a bit annoying really but Twitter's been fantastic over the years. I find it really useful to network with other creatives as well I found art directors on Twitter. I found it really helpful to network with other illustrators as well. So um, if you build up a good network, they'll often retweet your work. Their kindness in sharing your work should always be reciprocated though, because you know, you're trying to build up relationships with other people. So whenever I see anybody creating great work, I'll always give them a retweet or comments because you know it's just nice to be nice isn't it and if you're working on pop culture projects like for instance my movie posters that the director or actors within the film might often retweet your work 
um, if they like it. So I just find it a really great platform in a number of ways really. I think you have to be a bit more careful over recent years because of all the trolls on there. But if you just follow nice people, invariably you can blank out a load of the rubbish on there. So yeah, go and join Twitter and Instagram and whatever takes you fancy really. The only thing that I'd suggest that you do, and this is pretty important really, is to post regularly. So, you know, there's nothing worse than seeing somebody's amazing art on Twitter and they've not posted in two years so you think are they even still working as an illustrator? Is it worth contacting them? So you know that's actually worse than having no social media accounts at all. So yeah make sure you're uploading frequently. Tip number five, art directors. I'm really struggling to talk now. I found it really helpful to contact art directors directly in terms of promoting my work. And for this, I'd recommend that you look at the AOI website, which I'm sure that you've come across before if you're an illustrator that's practicing in any way. They essentially sell lists of contact details for um, art directors based in the UK, and I found this to be really, really helpful. You don't need to be an AOI member to buy these lists. I think they're just slightly more expensive for non-members, but they offer lists for editorial, advertising and I think publishing so there's three different kinds of lists so you'll need to really think about what kind of work that you want to do um, at the time of, of buying yours. I think I bought three together in a bundle which was quite useful. I bought mine maybe uh, gosh 12-18 months ago so they might not be the most current lists but I find that you know they're your lists for the taking then so you can amend them as much as you want so it might be useful for you to you know if you get an email bounce back to um, try and inv investigate who the new art director is and just upload the details onto your excel spreadsheets so they're just really easy to look after but i've definitely found these to be useful and i've gotten work off the back of them so they're a solid investment for any freelance illustrator out there so by all means go and and check out the AOI website um, and I'll leave a link down below for you just so that you can go and investigate those. If you're interested in publishing as an illustrator these books are really helpful as well the writers and artists yearbooks and you can tell how long it is since I've needed one um, really because I you know I, I don't work in publishing so um, it's something that you know I was considering at one point but I don't think my my aesthetic kind of <laughs> blends very well with the, with publishing briefs well the majority of them anyway so it's really useful however if publishing is the area for you if you're interested in children's books etc um, it's a really thick resource they've got um, all sorts of um, agencies and businesses in there so yeah it's really worthwhile getting getting a copy of, of this if publishing is, is up your street. Tip number six is exhibitions. If you look on Twitter or have a browse online there's very often call outs for artists and illustrators to take part in exhibitions and I've taken part in a few over the years. I've found them to be really helpful not only for promoting my own work but to come across other artists again so you can build up on your network um, it's always useful to, to have friends in the industry so yeah it's been really useful for me my favorite is probably secret seven which is a exhibition that happens usually every year or two and it's um, essentially all not-for-profits and they choose a charity each year and uh, or each exhibition and artists are encouraged to send off their artwork and interpretations of uh, cover art for usually quite well-known singles so yeah I've just really enjoyed taking part in the project and um, I've been really lucky my work's been selected each year that I've applied so yeah I'm, I've been really thankful for that and it's uh, yeah a national project so your work is often seen by all sorts of people often in the art industry and I think my work's been featured on creative review and it might be computer arts um, as a result of Secret 7 so yeah, it's really worthwhile getting involved. On a more local level, there's often art trails or local exhibitions happening, so it's worth putting your feelers out because you might be able to land some commissions as a result of um, 
your work getting seen locally um, so yeah it's just all about getting your work seen by as many people as possible so it doesn't matter if it's local if it's regional if it's national as long as you're promoting your work and getting it seen by potential clients you know that's what it's all about really tip number seven illustration agents I think once you're at a stage where you're really confident in your work and there's a, a definite aesthetic to your work so it really looks strongly like yours um, it might be worth contacting illustration agencies if you feel that that's the right thing for you to do there are pros and cons of having an agent and that's probably something that I'll cover in another video because there's um, a lot of information with regard to that so I think it needs its own standalone video until recently I was represented by a illustration agency in London and uh, some really nice people working there um, unfortunately I became ill at the beginning of the year so um, yeah I, I just said to them you know it's not kind of working out for the moment so they were really kind about it really understanding and um, they've kindly left the door open for me even when I want to return I'll save that story for the um, the separate video I think it kind of makes more sense really but if you think that you're at a stage for an agent um, there's loads of them out there um, it's worthwhile doing a good Google have a look who are on their books though however because if your work is too similar to another artist you basically you know you're probably wasting your time really in contacting them so it's really important to really try and get a strong aesthetic of your own in your artwork so you know it's not compared to to the to other artists in any ways so yeah it's really worthwhile looking who's on their roster first tip number eight is collaboration it's always worth collaborating with others in terms of getting a creative project off the ground and this can be done in a number of ways um, for instance I mentioned Secret 7 earlier and you know that's a collaboration the artist is working directly with the agency involved so that in itself allows the artist to promote their work in a way that they wouldn't be able to do on their own so um, it's always worth looking out for these kinds of opportunities however with collaboration you need to be careful with the prospect of being asked about sort of free work really which is something that we never want to hear as uh, as creative professionals um, the only time that I think it's um, appropriate to consider free work is for charities or not-for-profits and you know it can be quite helpful if you wanted to add something that looks kind of professional in your your online portfolio that you've worked with a professional client that can have its advantages but um, by all means don't be working for free for um, companies or, or you know brands because they've got the money to pay you and if they aren't paying you they're being unethical again this is another area that I'll probably cover on a separate video every illustrator out there has a story about being asked to work for free and you know it's really a frustrating it doesn't happen in the vast majority of other industries out there so I think it's just so frustrating that we as creatives are considered worthy of working for nothing so yeah i'll talk about this in in more detail in another video but collaboration can be a great thing perhaps you and a fellow creative would like to create something together that you'd find might be a little difficult to do on your own perhaps you've got a friend who's an animator so they can you know work with you to, to animate your your own illustration work so you know I just find it really useful to, to think it in terms of the bigger picture sometimes um, even when you're working with an art director that's still a collaboration you're not working alone so um, it's something that you should always be open to as a as an illustrator and there's plenty of potential for your work to get promoted through those means too so yep go and collaborate oh that was a lot of talking <laughs> I hope you enjoyed that and you found it useful. Um, if you're not an illustration graduate or an illustration student, but you know somebody who is, by all means let them know about this video. I'm sure they might find it useful in terms of getting their work seen. If I think of any other tips, I might put them together and put them in a, a second video at some point, but I think you've got enough to be, to be going on with today. So uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, subscribe if you're new and I'll be back with another video soon so yeah stay tuned for more and I'll see you soon bye bye